want to keep all children safe, but for Aboriginal children, I don't know how. I know. I feel the same way. We really need help. I'm here to save the day. I'm super champion. And it's my job to help mainstream organisations keep Aboriginal children safe. On top of the things you do for any child, I have three extra steps to keeping Aboriginal children safe in your organisation. The first step is to help mainstream organisations keep Aboriginal children safe by being culturally competent. The second step is to provide a culturally safe space. The third step is to ensure the Aboriginal child has a voice. The first step is to help mainstream organisations keep Aboriginal children safe by being culturally competent. Hi, we're here for cultural competency training. Oh, no, no worries, just take a seat with the rest of the group. Um, so, what does cultural competency have to do with uh, child safety? Well, it actually has a lot to do with keeping Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children safe. Let me explain why. The cornerstones of Aboriginal cultural competency are a commitment to social justice, truth-telling about Australian history, understanding Aboriginal culture, commitment to Aboriginal self-determination, and working together to build respectful partnerships with Aboriginal organisations. If your organisation can build on these cornerstones, you can have an organisation that has a true commitment to an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander child's outcomes. The true history of this Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander child's family and ancestors will be acknowledged and the impacts for this child today will be understood. Culture will be acknowledged, celebrated and the child will remain connected. The child will grow up strong and a part of true self-determination. All of this leads to an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander child's cultural, physical, spiritual and emotional safety. Ah, now I understand what cultural competency has to do with child safety. The second step to help mainstream organisations keep Aboriginal children safe is to provide a culturally safe space. Hi, can I help you? We're here for a meeting with Daniel. No problem, I'll just give Daniel a call. Let's pause for a second. What about this space makes it culturally safe? You guessed it, nothing. So let's rewind, reset and have another go. Oh good, thanks. We're here for a meeting with Daniel. No problems, I'll just give Daniel a call for you. Now what about this space makes it culturally safe? Let's show you the difference. Displaying a plaque at your workplace is a great way to show awareness and pay respect to the traditional owners of the land. When a child sees an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander flag, it makes them feel proud and connected. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are proud to represent their culture in a contemporary way. Incorporating Aboriginal art and decor into your workplace can help your Aboriginal clients and staff feel comfortable, represented and included. The third step to keeping an Aboriginal child safe in an organisation is by ensuring the child has a voice. I think the best way to sort this out is to ask a group of Koori kids when they felt their voice was being heard. How does it make you feel when you have a voice? Without a voice you, you won't be able to stuff you might want to. Yeah. It's important for people to listen to me because I might be saying something important to them. Like it's important for people to listen to me because I'm, I might be talking about my family. What's everybody's bump here? Mine's Pajimala. Yeah. <laughs> What's your mom? Pajimala. Yeah. Good tomorrow. Good tomorrow. The same. The same. Good tomorrow. Yoda Yoda World Premier Orange. Yoda Yoda. Good tomorrow, Mumbo Wumba. Deadly. Does anybody know what this is? A cool flag. flag. A flag. A flag. And how does this flag make you feel? Happy. Happy. Proud. Proud. Happy. Safe. 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 Represented. Do you feel like you can talk freely about being Aboriginal? Yes. Yeah, I can make that. Oh, can you? <laughs> Does anybody want to give it a crack of what it means? The black stands for the people, the yellow stands for the sun, and the red stands for the blood or the land. So how do you feel when you go to a non-Koori organisation? Um, mm -hmm. no. 
Not safe. Yeah, not, not really safe. Endangered. Yeah. Why is that? Because Sad. we don't really know the people and we don't like... Well, when you're with your family, you feel like protected, but when you're with people that you don't know, you like get scared a little bit. One thing I love about my culture is that we get to go to all the uh, NAIDOC events. One thing I love about my culture is my family. One thing I love about my culture is that we get to go to special events. Does anybody here know how to do the acknowledgement? We, we acknowledge that we gathered on the traditional lands of the Kulu Nation and particularly the Wurundjeri people of this area. We pay our respects to the elders of our community, past, present and future, for they hold the customs, the culture and in hopes of Indigenous Australia. The land upon which we are gathered is, was, and always will be Aboriginal land. We acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the first owners of the land which we live and learn at Bulbut Willow. We pay our respects to the elders and past and present the elders here today. Yay! I believe my work here is done. Just to remind you all of the three simple steps to keeping Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children safe, remember step one is to help mainstream organisations be culturally competent. Step two is to provide a culturally safe space and the third and final step is ensuring that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children always have a voice. Earlier, our mainstream workers struggled with how to keep Aboriginal children safe in their organisation. Let's check in and see how they're going after we've coached them through this. On top of all the things I do for any child to keep them safe in an organisation, I've learned the steps to help Aboriginal children feel safe. I need to be culturally competent, I need to provide a safe space for Aboriginal children and I need to ensure Aboriginal children have a voice within my organisation. Thanks Superchamp, I can do this now. <laughs>